All right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm John and I have a really fun experiment that I'm gonna to start today. So I have these three ficus triangularis variegata cuttings, all nicely rooted in this perlite. It's been a long time since I've had three basically identical plants. So I wanna take this opportunity to put all three of these into different um, soil ingredients. And I haven't ever really tried using just a single ingredient by itself when I'm making a gritty mix. So I have here pumice, turface, and diatomaceous earth. I'm gonna use them all by themselves for each of these three pots, and we'll see if there's any sort of difference in the growth that we get. Now, of all these three potting ingredients, pumice is by far the most loved by everybody. Um, basically, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about pumice. Turfus and diatomaceous earth are highly controversial. Some people love them, some people hate them. In general, people think the particle size is a little too small. These for sure hold way more water than the pumice, so we'll see out of all three of these if these guys like the wetter mix or the drier mix more. Now the one issue that people have with turfus, or basically the main issue it comes down to, a lot of the particles end up being pretty flat. And so if you're using a large portion of this in your mix and you get a lot of those flat pieces stacked on top of each other, that particular section of your pot is just going to react differently to water. So it might actually absorb more water or it could get really dry and then it's not going to absorb water as well as the rest of the pot. So people growing in pure turf, turf face, um, while some people love it, a lot of people report that they end up with sort of dead zones in the roots, the root mass where it's just either too dry or too wet and so the roots will seek out other areas of the pot that have more uniform levels of moisture. And I did just pot an alocasia black velvet into pure diatomaceous earth uh, very recently, about five days ago, and it's still totally wet, which is the longest I've ever seen any gritty mix stay wet. Um, so for sure this holds a ton of water. I'll see how that plays out in the long run, but today we're gonna stick each of these into these new mixes and we'll see how it goes. All right, check that out. How's that? Oh, it looks awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna try and separate these as gently as possible. All right, so they have a similar amount of roots. Um, maybe this one has the least. Okay, so the perlite's pretty stuck on there, so I got a lot of it off, but I'm just leaving some in the name of healthy roots. It's fine, it's not gonna mess with the experiment too much. So I have, I'm using these screens at the bottom of the pots. All of the pots are the same size. Okay, so let's pot them up. All right, so there we have it. So I've got them all potted up. I'm gonna go water them and give them a very low dose of fertilizer just to get them started. And then I'm gonna stick them back in that propagation bin. So this won't be the absolute best test for these soil mixtures because they will be at a humidity of higher than 90%. So these are basically just gonna stay wet for a long time and I'll probably just water them all once a week. So I will check back and we'll see what a few weeks of growth looks like in a moment. And we're back. All right, um, so these have been growing for about two months now. And so I'm ready to just give these away like I said I would. And I wanted to go over which one was the winner. Was there a winner? What did we learn from this experiment? So pumice, turfus, diatomaceous earth. It looks, at first glance, obviously this looks like the clear winner. This is the pumice. Um, this one has 12 leaves right now. The one in turfus has eight, and the one in diatomaceous earth has seven. So seems like this kind of blew these other two away, and then these two are more or less tied. However, the one in turfus actually lost all of its leaves, um, and then it regrew all of these and it actually passed this one. So um, this totally beat the diatomaceous earth um, completely. If it, because if it had not lost those leaves, it may have been the clear winner. We don't know. Um, what happened is that there was so much humidity in the bin that some actually a layer of water formed on the bottom. Um, and this one was sitting in the corner, kind of tipped on its side slightly. So it was actually soaking water up for a couple days before I noticed it and it freaked it out and it lost all of its leaves, but it bounced back really well. Um, 
and actually has like a ninth baby leaf on the way. So from this experiment, in a humidity bin, it may seem that pumice is the better choice of these three, but let's keep in mind pumice holds the least amount of moisture. So maybe it was the fact that it actually wasn't as wet that was beneficial in such a high humidity environment. Um, but the other thing is that this pumice has by far the largest average particle size. So even though I'm sifting all of these exactly in the same way, just the way that these two are manufactured, they have a much more smaller particle size in general compared to this pumice here, which has a lot more pieces that are above 1 8 inch. And this are mostly around that 8 inch um, size. So I'm not ready to say that pumice is better than turfus and diatomaceous earth because it may be just that you want something that holds less moisture when you have 90% humidity or more, or it might be just that the bigger particle size really was the way to go. So I don't know, um, but I will say that the diatomaceous earth outside of the bin has been great so far. I've been growing a dracaena and an alocasia in that all by itself. Um, just purely in that and it's been really cool because from uh, the other side of the room I can see visually whether it's dry or not and then you can just push the top layer aside and you know whether you need to water it right away or not so I've been really liking that so yeah sorry I cannot tell you what is the best one out of all these but for sure um, I didn't go wrong with any of them they all worked really well I will say that the diatomaceous earth is the one that had the most roots outside of the pot. So you might think that maybe this one actually grew the, ro the most roots, um, which is possible, but since this one has so much more roots that grew out the bottom of the pot, and there's even a bunch here that actually like fell off because they got stuck, that tells me that maybe this is too wet and all of those roots are out looking for air. Um, so in a humidity bin, this would be my last choice out of these three, although they all worked well. So if you have only one of these, then it's going to be fine. Also, I really don't remember potting all these at an angle, but um, yeah, there's some, there's some extreme angling going on. Looks kind of cool. So where does, where does this get us? Um, for me personally, if I was going to grow something in a humidity bin long term, I would lean towards something a little drier with a larger particle size like this pumice here. For something that's going to be out of the bin where I'm going to be watering much more often, I would definitely lean more towards one of these, um, but further experimentation is definitely needed. So I hope you found this interesting though, and I do hope that this at least gives you some clues as to what to look for in a good potting medium if you are wanting to try one ingredient all by itself. And I will definitely be back with some more videos and experiments in the future, and I really hope to see you then. For now, have a wonderful day and happy gardening. See you next time.